it's after Thanksgiving. It's nearly Christmas. You guys are probably out watching movies with your families to avoid talking with your families. And I'm watching a lot of movies too. In fact, I'm on my way to another movie premiere, another publicity lunch. It's another season of red carpets, of chasing celebrities to get them to talk about their least favorite, favorite subject, the Oscars. I mean, I can't even comment on that. You know, it doesn't matter. Are we in the Oscar thing yet? I'm Elena Rizek with the New York Times. How are you? Hi, I'm good. It's an honor, a thrill. They're just happy to be there. You know the drill. Is there a responsibility of being in an Oscar frontrunner? Do you have to behave differently? Do you have to do anything? <laughs> um, well, I guess I shouldn't get involved with any chief justices or anything. <laughs> what do you remember from your first go around with the Oscars? I remember being like a stunned mullet. A mullet is a fish, and when they catch them and they hit them, um, oh, I'm being stupid now. I'm not even drunk. Yeah, why want you to keep making that face? <laughs> uh, it, the, the Oscar buzz um, when I was nominated was totally overwhelming. I think I can cope with anything now that I, I've coped with that. It was, it was huge. It makes you realise, coming from a small country like, like Australia, what an enormous industry it is in America. I, I have never been to the Gotham Awards before. The awards shows here are less driven by money and what you can buy for yourself with a campaign. Sometimes I talk to people and they say, that doesn't happen. Yeah, no, there is awards campaigning and people buy their way into award shows all the time. And that absolutely happens. And you know what? You can be jaded about it and be pissed off about it. But to me, it's all part of the business, you know? Is this your good light right here? This, how do I look? Side. Do you know what your good side is? I think it's this side, actually. Tell me about being the sort of a hoopla of being an, an Oscar front runner. I mean, that's very kind of you to say that, but it, if, if that is true, it's completely based on nothing. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Bradley may not think the Oscar race is based on much, but it is. It's based on a delicate sifting of studio campaigns, movie-going buzz, Oscar voter attention. Here are the movies I think you should be looking out for this Oscar season. There's Lincoln, Steven Spielberg's epic starring Daniel Day-Lewis as the talkative 16th president. Ben Affleck is making his mark as a filmmaker with Argo, the real-life Hollywood story of the hostage crisis in Iran. What was the last movie you produced? Uh, high, high and Dry. Who paid for that? CFTC. What's your middle name? What's your middle name? What's your middle name? Leon? Shoot him. He's an American spy. Silver Linings Playbook is a comedic drama from David O. Russell, which treats serious subjects like mental illness with offbeat humor. So you're taking the proper dosage of your medication? Am I taking the right dose? Of course I am. Okay. Beasts of the Southern Wild is a fantastical indie starring non-professional actors like standout Quivan Janae Wallace, whose name you should try to remember. The whole universe depends on everything fitting together just right. And there are still movies in the wings like Les Miserables, the big budget adaptation from the Oscar winning director Tom Hooper. And Zero Dark Thirty, about the hunt for Osama bin Laden, from the Oscar winners Catherine Bigelow and Mark Bowl, who did The Hurt Locker. So, check back here as the race unfolds. I'll keep crunching the numbers. It's basically Nate Silver caliber stuff. <laughs>